Ooh, ooh, there's the sign. There's a little sign. It shows up on my screen right there. Right there, a little sign shows up and says, you are live. And so now um, I'm back with you. Oh, this is so pleasant for me. <laughs> Memorial Day weekend is gone. I haven't seen you in a couple of you guys in a couple of weeks. And the reason why is that uh, uh, my producer and I, uh, we, we went to Spain. We went to the Basque region of Spain. Uh, wound up in Bilbao and then San Sebastian and explored that beautiful northern coast of, uh, of Spain and the Pyrenees Mountains. And oh, man, that's really, that's really something up there. Very, very impressive. But we're back now. Why? Because I think this is the 80th version. Eight zero version. The living stand take show. It's the living stand table show. Livingston Taylor Show. You never know where it's gonna go. It's Livingston Taylor Show. Is he sinking in a boat? Is he crashing in a plane? Does he even understand that the devil loves the rain? Is he casually eccentric or actually insane? What stork brought that brain? It's the Livingston Taylor Show. It's the Livingston Taylor Show. You never know where it's gonna go. It's the Livingston Taylor Show. Give it a moment. Yes, it's the Living Stentator Show Brought to you today by As each and every week WMVY Radio, listener-supported radio on the island of Martha's Vineyard. And uh, you can just dial it in on whatever uh, internet communication device you might happen to have. It'll be there. Also brought to you today by Champion Spark Plugs. Hold on a second. Uh, Champion Spark Plugs right here. Champion Spark Plugs. I want to tell you a little story. I have a 3.5 horsepower Tahatsu outboard motor, and it's been fine, but it's never run terribly well. So, you know, I'm a pretty good wrench. So I replaced the carburetor and I replaced the fuel pump and I tested all of these things. I just replaced everything and it still ran poorly. And finally, I went and I bought a new spark plug. I have to tell you, I'm a pretty good wrench and I really understand combustion. I understand fuel oxygen ratios. I understand, um, uh, oh gosh, six, 700 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in a combustion chamber to get hydrocarbons to combine with oxygen and explode in a, uh, and push the piston down. I got this stuff, guys. I thought I had a fuel starvation problem with my Tahatsu motor, but not so. It was, in fact, an electrical problem, or it appears to be an electrical problem, having a bad spark plug in this champion Copper Plus spark plugs uh, um, uh, model uh, number uh, 810 uh, for my little outboard motor solved my problem. So they turned into a sponsor today. 
uh, as in part for me to sing their praises and thank them for uh, making my little motor run. And what that's going to mean is that my producer and I are going to go out and, and go fishing. We're going to go fish and see if we can uh, 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 take some of the lures that we bought. I was I'm fond of reminding people uh, in the fish store, not the fish store, but the lure place, the place where you buy the lures in Kmart or um, Cabela's or whatever the store is. My thought is that the lure doesn't have to catch fish. It only has to catch you. Last and final sponsor today, MF, MFA, Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And it's not just the Museum of Fine Arts. What's really crucial? What's really crucial, guys? If you're a, if you're a player, if you're a creator, if you're a writer, if you're a songwriter, you need to go see art. Go to the Museum of Fine Arts, the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Go seek out and find these great places and let that genius seep into your own creativity. It's very, uh, uh, very important. These are worthwhile trips. These are worthwhile things to support. So supporting your art centers in your local towns. And uh, this is, yeah, this is essential stuff. Um, uh, I am now, uh, I'm sorry, I've got to check with my producer. I'm looking for a song list. Do you have that oh, over there? No, that's... Uh, uh, that's no problem. Uh, on vacation <laughs> far too long. Uh, my producer said she's been on vacation too long and she forgot to. This is sort of a little list of things we're going to do. I don't want to not move it around. No, don't show them. I'm not showing them. I'm moving it around so they can't read it. They will have to stop the screen and then read it. So um, that's what we have. I guess this, that's pretty familiar to you guys. Oh, blackbird singing in the death of night. Dickies broken wings and learn to fly. Oh, all your life. You're only waiting for this moment to arrive. Now blackbirds sing in the dead of night Take these sucking eyes and learn to see All your life You're only waiting for the storm to be Blackbird fly Blackbird one of the things I do like to do is I like to morph a familiar song into one of my own or a less familiar song. Of course, I think there's part of me that really wishes that my song were the more familiar song and then I could morph it in the Blackbird as a less familiar song. Ooh, wouldn't that be pleasant? Anyhow, it's not the cycle we're going to take on this one. This one says, Pit and strong, burned up hot, stoked and ready 
Pick up a bun boy, shot a pair to the bone, chased up a tree. When you hear a shout on the one way out, look up and there by me. Under a dog, dart in the wall. Scruffy and a little chewed up, tugging myself up tall. No fine print. They tore up a guarantee. Oh, get up near when the smoke all clears. Look up in their eyes. I'll be there when they're holding up their hearts and kicking up their heels. And howling at the moon. I'll be there when they finally figure out love writes the sweetest tunes, love heals the deepest wounds, love fills the empty. Thanks for the walk and the cigarette. And if you're going past the peace bar and you want to make a bet, win, play, soars, you can set it all on me. Oh, lay your hands on the promised land, the cup and bear by me. Will you lay your hands on the promised land, the cup and bear by me. Boy, I love playing the guitar, and I don't know why, but today, this is just, I don't know, it's just burning. Ooh. Yeah, um, uh, for some reason today, I, I'm giving this guitar a uh, um, uh, good old uh, uh, Massachusetts beatdown today. It's fun. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries, upcoming shows, birthdays. Here we go. Now, um, uh, 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 Patricia uh, 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 Johnson, correct? Patricia Johnson, yeah, uh, but five four. That means we missed her birthday because we were off um, in Spain. No, we missed it. Oh, we, uh, oh, so this was, this was, uh, oh, so this was, uh, yes, this was a, pro um, uh, this was a talent production failure that we missed Patricia Johnson's birthday. It was May 4th, May 4th. Um, Shannon Tolley, um, Shannon Tolley was May 5th, and I think I missed that one too, but uh, doesn't mean that I'm not celebrating it now and not glad about it. Um, Gene Wright, um, 521, May 21. That we didn't miss. We were out of the, uh, uh, out of the country. The Livingston Taylor show was overseas. Uh, Lynn Jaffe, Lynn Jaffe. I wonder if that's the Lynn Jaffe that I know. Good friend of mine. Uh, 526. Um, Cheryl Curran, uh, Martin, correct? Uh, just checking with my mm -hmm. producer here, Cheryl Curran Martin, five twenty-seven, and so that's our birthdays. And uh, uh, this is the piece of cake with those candles, all those candles, uh, uh, five of them, ready to be blown out, making those birthday wishes come quite true. Ooh. That'd be nice. <laughs> The 
great Nat King Cole sang this song. And now here we are in early summer. And so many of, her, of you are experiencing those beautiful, soft evenings. Here on Martha's Vineyard, not yet. The water is still cold, but soon even we will have them. And we will say, gee, it's great after staying in our place, walking my baby back home. Farm and farm, over meadow and farm, I'm walking my baby back home. We stroll along, harmonizing a song, or I'm reciting a poem. Pals fly by and they give me the eye. I'm walking my baby back home. We stop for a while, she gives me a smile, then she snuggles her cheek to my chest. Well, we start to pet. That's when I get towel come all over my vest. After I kind of straighten my tie, she has to borrow my comb. One kiss, then it's a pleasure again. I'm walking my baby back home. I'm walking my baby back home. I'm walking my baby back home. <sighs> yeah, that song is so light and so, so easy to play. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Today, you'll notice there's an extra chair here, and that's because um, I, today I have a special guest, a, a wonderful friend of my producer and myself, Lauren Segan is her name. She hails from the great state of California, raised in New York, though. You will hear in that accent. This is, this is, uh, this is New York ferocity tempered with the gentleness and insight of California. It's going to be, this is a very, very pleasant combination. Um, uh, uh, Lauren is a screenwriter. She writes and develops um, uh, 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 television shows, movies. She's a writer. And I wanted her to come on and discuss quickly how, uh, if you how this gets done, how it gets sold, what things you need to do, what um, the producers, uh, uh, production houses are looking for. And so Lauren, if you'd uh, join me right here, that'd be great. Livingston. Nice to see oh you. Gosh. I'm usually on the other side on of the that other side. every week. Yes, and watching the Livingston Taylor Show. Active audience, <laughs> I want to thank you and Gail for making our Tuesdays Great. Gail, who's that? Oh, the producer. Yes. Yeah, because I, yes. I sort of am always on the side of the yeah. producer, yeah. right? Because actually... Well, that's because you and the producer are best friends. Sometimes we're one in the same. I know. Because in right. television, yeah. writers, when you look at the yeah. credits, yeah. people see producer, co-producer, yeah. executive producer, yeah. and that's for the writers yeah. in television, particularly in that, in that genre we have that producing um, role and title. Yeah. And um, I really love television yeah. because it's very collaborative. Interesting. There's normally yeah. a writer's room and yeah. you bounce ideas off of each other. And often they're peopled with writers from different backgrounds and mm. different life experience. And that creates great conversation and great, characters and stories and all that kind of richness comes out of that. Um, and so when you say a room full, how many people we're talking? Well, it really uh, depends. Three, five? <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately with 
the economy as yeah. it is. And uh, this has been scaled back. I've been mm -hmm. on shows. I started my career in soap operas yeah. way back when. Oh, it's great. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah. I love Charles Dickens, yeah. the the um, inventor of the form of mm -hmm. episodic and serialized storytelling. Yeah. So in that, it was daily programming. That was yeah. really unbelievable. That was like so learning how mm. to produce material 80 pages a week and scripts, but they had dialogue writers of yeah. which I was one. And so we had five of those and then five of breakdown or outline writers and you would take their outline and you yeah. would create the script from that. So 10, uh, 12 people in a room, that was really exciting. Then, now, when you were writing the soap I'm, I'm I'm curious, did you, were people ever, uh, were you cognizant of not going down a blind alley, for example, or writing one of your characters into a box that, that you couldn't get them out of? Yeah, or, yeah. As a fan of the original Batman, yeah, yeah that Lorenzo Semple wrote, yeah. I, I, I definitely was aware of that because I never knew at the end of that show how Batman yeah. was going to get out of those pickles. Yeah. But um, yeah. what would what what we would do is, you know, your audience yeah. says these two characters, you've been keeping them apart for four yeah. years. Yeah. And if, if then you get them together yeah. and they write in and they're yeah. very, very devoted fans, yeah. sometimes yeah. many years, yeah. generations of yeah. families. And they say, if you break them up, yeah. I am never going to watch this show again. Oh, God. And of that's course, so you know, well, yeah. that's not true because yeah. if you keep them together, yeah. it's just totally boring. Yeah, and who right. wants to tune into Happy Couple? That's, that's like, right. Yeah, it doesn't make good that's, stories. Yes, that's right. That's so, right. but you know, Conflict. it's in this day and age, it's there's so many platforms. There's, you know, Netflix, yeah. Amazon. Um, so, how do you, how Hulu, does all of these, how and, does one of our, uh, viewers who says i i love to write i want to do this professionally how do you get something to somebody well you know it it is a process i do think having an agent helps you yeah. um but sometimes a lot of people break in by being a writer's assistant which yeah. is also not the easiest uh, job to get yeah. but if if you have that um if you have that advantage, then you are eventually given a script to write or a story, and then you work your way up, story editor, yeah. and then script writer, and on and on, producer, co-producer. Well, what you're essentially saying is that if you uh, if you want to go into the story, you need to eventually you're going to have to be in the parking lot. Yeah. And so, uh, essentially, does that mean that you? Uh, uh, need to be in New York or Los Angeles? I think you're, I think certainly, yes. Yeah. I, and I do think having material for people to read is yeah. a number one thing. Mm. You know, samples yeah. of sometimes people write scripts of yeah. other shows yeah. that they've seen or yeah. existing shows, but more and more if you write a play or um, an original script or even a monologue, it gives people a sense of your style, what you're capable of and mm. that's what's really important is to have a portfolio of material that you can show yeah, yeah. You, you know that it reminds me that um at one point in the uh mid uh in the early 80s i wanted to uh, uh write jingles and i hadn't written any jingles so i didn't have a reel to show anybody and so i just sat down and wrote five jingles for different products and i just made up my own reel for myself i mean i think all of us yeah. would love to hear those jingles if you can pull them <laughs> out <laughs> <of your back. laughs> well, uh, but you know it's i love i want to say i want to yeah. acknowledge something that you always credit yeah. the writers you know when you yeah. when you play your songs if if you're playing someone else's song yeah. and you mention you know Comden and green you mm -hmm. mentioned um, yeah. Andy Breckman, we yeah. talked about today. Yeah. And then Railroad Bill is one yeah. of my favorites oh, that you God, do because a it's great, a story, right? What a spectacular piece of writing that is. It's yeah. a character. Yeah. It's got conflict. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's an entire yeah. novel in yeah. this song, right? Yeah. Yeah. And many of your songs do that too. Yeah. Your Civil War song. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. that's a that's mm -hmm. a tearjerker. Yeah. When you pull that one out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, it's a pleasure. Uh, 
Thank you for inviting me. Lauren, so great. Lauren (laughs) Segan on the Livingston Taylor Show. All right, sweetheart. Thanks for having me. Great to see you. How pleasant is that? By the way, you know, not only a great, uh, a great friend, but but a a wonderfully creative person. Mm, mm. This is an older song of mine. It says simply, My heart had been broken. I could not stand no more. Put locks on my windows And I broke to tight my doors Then I took a look at you And could not control my mind I'm going out Oh, going around one more time. Yes, I'm going round, going round, going round, going round, one more time. That it was a little heartbreaker. It didn't quite work out. In a number on my confidence, I was riddled with self-doubt. I said, that's it, I'm through, I quit. Then Juanita, she looked so fine. Now I'm going round, oh, going round. One more time. Yes, I'm going round, going round, going round, going round. One more time. Round and round in circles. It's always the same. One moment you swear you've had. And the next you got a no burden name All by myself it wasn't so bad Getting by as I could get Stepped into a drugstore For a pack of cigarettes well, she didn't have a coin, she had to call her cousin Kate. Could I loan her just one dime? Now I'm going down, oh, going down, one more time. Yes, I'm going down, going, going round, going around. One more time. Yes, I hope I'm going around. One more time. Yes, I'm going round. Oh, going around. One more Mm. You know, that's a, uh, uh, that's a song that, uh, I th- my brother James did that song at one point and, and did, he did a great job with it. It's really fun to hear other people do your songs, uh, particularly if they happen to be your brother and sound a lot like you. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very, very uh, very pleasant here. Oh, let me see. We're running out of time. Oh, 
Oh, well, my, uh, my producer is telling me not to forget about upcoming shows. You're right. I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to play this song. And uh, Upcoming shows. One Longfellow Square. One Longfellow Square. June 4th. That's in Portland, Maine. And if you think that's going to be fun, you are right. We are going to party. Woo. Um, and then on June 15th, center stage, Rochester, New York. Rochester. God, that's a lovely city. Mm. City on the lake. A lot going on in Rochester, New York. And one of the things is Livingston Taylor is playing at center stage June 15th. And then Southern Vermont Arts Center, Manchester, Vermont. That's on July 2nd. And, uh, oh gosh, I'm looking forward to all of those shows. Sure, it's nice to be back out there and seeing you people's beautiful faces. You know, it's some, I remember so clearly writing this song. I was in New York City. I was staying in some hotel there. I was crossing at the corner. The day was gray, the air was cold. When suddenly it occurred to me I was easy in my I was crying cause I loved you The sun was shining in my shell Deftly dodging crazy taxis I'm glad I know you well I have watched you in a garden Dirty hands and shining skin A smile that says you're glad to see me And a sigh for the sadness where I've been No need to worry about protection I hold the shield that is your spell let me help you with the weaving. I'm glad I know you well. Do -do -do. I've been looking out for answers. I think, frankly, there are none. There is honor, love, and family, and work left to be done. And when I listen to the wine, who say this world has gone to hell? But I can smile and disagree because I know you well. All right. It's the end of the Livingston Taylor Show for this version. The 80th version, the 81st version of the Livingston Taylor Show will be up soon enough.
with one wave of that mighty hand. The stormy seas were parted. It's gonna be so easy. Let's get started. It's the Livingston Taylor Show. It's the Livingston Taylor Show. We're out of time. We gotta go. We'll be back soon. Couple of weeks, I know. We're gonna turn on the tap and let it fall on the Livingston Taylor Show.